What would your advice be to people in New York? How can they educate themselves and put a stop to this before it happens? Well, they need to educate themselves by learning who this person is. They need to begin to understand that the Islamic theologians in America, you cannot find one that they consider peaceful. There are peaceful Muslims, I call them liberal Muslims, that want nothing to do with Sharia. They want to live in America peacefully. However, we can't find elements in the Islamic organizations in America there is a lit that, that are peaceful. There is a litany of statements by all these organizations, whether MPAC, Islamic Society of North America, Council of American Islamic Relations, the MSUs, Muslim Student Unions, universities, that are loaded with jihadist ideology, very clear in the same sync and in line with the uh, plight of Osama bin Laden's type of jihad. So we cannot trust Islamic organizations to establish a mosque in America. It's not, this is not an individual. He belongs to an organization he founded. His father was in the Muslim Brotherhood, admittedly, and he has never condemned the actions of his father. Regarding Ralph's New York Daily News article, is there an Islamic doctrine about lying to the kufr, the non-Muslim, that we hear about? That is correct. In Islam, there is called what is called at taqiyya wal kitman in accordance to at tabari the famous tafsir or interpretation of the exegesis of the Quran. This is a standard authoritative reference uh, for the entire Muslim world in which the quote by at tabari if you, as a, in this case Muslim, are under their infidels authority, fearing for yourself, behave loyally to them with your tongue while harboring inner animosity for them. Allah has forbidden believers from being friendly or uh, intimate terms on intimate terms with the infidels in place of believers, except when infidels are above them in authority. In such a scenario, let them act friendly towards them. And also Ibn Kathir, uh, he says, whoever at any time or place fears their uh, evil, that is the infidel's evil, uh, may protect himself through outward show. Uh, let us smile to the face of some people, the non-Muslims in this case, while our hearts curse them. So the Daily News article is an example of that, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. So the question becomes, is how do we find out what they conceal in their heart? How do you find out uh, the true uh, uh, thinking of this Muslim? Uh, we have, this is why we have to go to the Arabic language. You look at the Fort Hood massacre. Right after the massacre, the Lu'ay Safi of the Islamic Society of North America was invited to give speeches to our troops. Uh, yet, when you look at the Arabic language of what he says, he says every Muslim community needs to establish the proper jihad they need to carry out, in this case being political, financial, or actual terrorism in itself. In fact, Lu'ay Safi was found uh, having some criminal charges as of late in which he is being investigated. So the Islamic Society of North America, slick willies, scholars, uh, who are concealing in their heart truly what they say in the Arabic language. That's why we have to go to the Arabic. This is why in every single occasion, when people come to me with names, prominent Muslim names, they say, well, this guy's a peaceful Muslim. What about that guy? What about this guy? Do you know, in every investigation, I've investigated every single Muslim scholar that people gave to me, that they thought was uh, uh, liberal or peaceful, I ended up going to the Arabic and finding otherwise. Take Hisham Qabbani, for instance. I had this dialogue with uh, James Woolsey. He was the head of the CIA. He says, well, you know, there are prominent Muslim scholars that are peaceful. I says, well, give me one name, just one. And he says, well, Hisham Qabbani. I said, did you see what he writes in the Arabic language? He says, when the Mahdi appears, Christianity will cease to exist. What's he talking about is the obliteration of our constitution and the Christian world altogether. In other words, this Sufi Muslim cleric believes that Osama bin Laden acted in haste. He has no authority to establish jihad. Only the Mahdi can establish jihad. While there are Muslim scholars who don't agree with the terrorism act, they don't agree with it because of the timing aspect of it. And this is why I don't agree with many of the, uh, even people on the right who believe these prominent Muslims are uh, supposed to be peaceful. They're not. Well, what are we supposed to do then? You're putting people in a very tough box, I must say, Waleed. What we need to understand is this, and this is why 
the uh, so-called experts in this country don't really understand the full issue. We need to understand that all Islamic organizations in America, when Islam is an, an organized form, it's never peaceful. It always advocates for establishing a Sharia hegemony worldwide. This is the whole goal of the whole movement. While we see Muslim individuals being peaceful, that's true. There are individual Muslims who are peaceful, and there are plenty of them. But the problem is that we're not looking at the organizational forms of the Muslim movements. When we look at that and try to find a single Islamic organization in this country that we think is peaceful, that is accepted predominantly in the Muslim world, we find otherwise. None of them. Name the organization, and I'll show you the litany of statements they made that support Sharia and jihadist movement. So Islam in an organized form needs to be exposed as such because we don't have movements that are so-called peaceful movements from prominent Muslim scholars. I know people can uh, talk about, let's say, uh, Dr. Zuhdi Jasser. But if you ask Zuhdi Jasser, how many Muslim followers do you have? He says less than 100. That's his own words. And when I ask Zuhdi Jasser at a synagogue, how do you justify Muhammad killing the Jews of Banu Quraida? He says they had a fair trial. Even he has a problem of exposing the jihadist agenda in Islam because he is tied in a bind. If he denounces these things, he has denounced Islam itself and denounced his own religion because we're not talking about a religion. We're talking about a jihadist movement in this case. Now, I'm not saying that Dr. Zuhdi Jasser is a jihadist. In fact, I appreciate what he's doing. He is really intending to fighting the jihadist ideology. But, you know, you can see even with him being a liberal Muslim, there's still these problems. If the New York situation goes through, if they build that mosque, how will that be seen in the Islamic world? Will it be seen as a great symbol of victory? Well, it's not only the great symbol of victory. I mean, the, the question, I was just talking to my mother on the phone, and she, says, she said, well, out of all the uh, uh, lands that we have in America and all God's green earth, they couldn't find a place to pray except on ground zero? Why? What's the purpose? The purpose is establishing an Islamic embassy. You have to understand in Islamic law, this a mosque is what is called Sharia Waqf. Waqf is Islamic property in which a mosque becomes an embassy for the Islamic Ummah. And no man in the world is allowed to close down a mosque. Now, if you decide to close it down, this is going to infuriate Muslims globally. So it's going to, you know, the reason that he's doing it because he knows what he's doing. He's creating a struggle between American and American. And, you know, he is winning either way. If he uh, opens the mosque and it ends up being closed, he has basically rallied the Muslim world into uh, creating riots against the West. Here's my question to you. In reading the Daily News piece that Abdul Rauf wrote, he insisted that it's not really a mosque. It's really a community center akin to a Y with a gym, basketball court, swimming pool. But there are places people can pray. So what's the difference or is there a difference? There is no difference. A place that whenever Muslim come more than one individual, in other words, what they call Salat al-Jama'ah, a community prayer, just like as in the Jewish synagogue when you have 10 a minion, they pray in a synagogue. So whenever there is more than one praying in a place, it becomes automatically a mosque because there is more than a, a, the place will fit thousands of Muslims praying. So this is clearly just basically a smoke screen to try to cover the agenda of it being a mosque. You know, he clearly says in other statements that it is a mosque. So <laughs> That was Walid Shubat, author of God's War on Terror, Islam, Prophecy, and the Bible. If you want to join the conversation, Tell us your opinion in the comments section below. For PJTV, I'm Roger Simon.